So we're gonna make this the most simple little baby vase ever. It's a good first exercise. We're gonna start by making a round bottom. So I wanna even out the bottom of this. And the goal is to make it um, consistent with the rest of the two. You don't wanna have a big old thick spot. Flipping gently till it's, it's close to being uh, uniformly thick throughout. Let's build up some heat base in here. So when you're blowing a bubble, if it's like, you know, going to be relatively thin, it's really best to try to do it in one go. So I'm building up a heat base. I'm angling up so it doesn't flop around on me a whole bunch. It'll flop around a little bit. It's okay. Just try to keep it under control. Okay. So it's puff, turn, puff, turn, puff, turn. Flatten it. The heat base is still in there. Okay. Oh, that little funky gallic. That's okay. Technique. We're going to let that cool down. We'll come back to that. This is the easiest number one base. And we'll uh, cut it off the cut off the point with our shears. All right, let's make an animal. <laughs> cool, all right. point on this other end because it doesn't need to be open. I'm just going to put a, a handle on. It's a fun starter one. So I'm gonna go like, I'm gonna heat like the back half, two thirds to a half of the bubble, and we'll puff out the body. As I'm blowing, I'm pushing a little bit in because I want it to be a little more squat. Flattening it on my graphite. So it's all like, what shape do you want? If you want to pull it out as you're blowing, you just you pull your, your hands apart. If you want more of a squat shape, you push them together. Are right, we're going to make the neck. Heating right on the other side of that body on that tube. I have not done yet. I have not messed with at all. Build a little bit of heat in there. This is a one stop shop. Just go for it, pull it out, bring it back. That's the fun move right there. You only got one like chance to do that one, <laughs> but practice.
every time I add a solid, some hollow, I puff out a little bit. That helps with the stress. I'm gonna add some wings. So you can add solid to hollow if your hollow isn't too thin. But it's really important for people to know this because sometimes it feels like a real no-no. And if you add something really thick to something really thin, it does add stress. So you just have to treat it the right way. So I'm adding a little stripe of solid because I'm gonna like do stripe, uh, stripe the wings on. So I'm gonna just puff it out. That way it doesn't get concave. If it gets concave, that's stress time. That's what we wanna avoid. So it's allowing me to, um, this move allows me to make it a hot seal. It also allows me to puff it out a bit. Now I'm gonna do the, this fun move where we, uh, we layer glass on to create a wing. So I'm stretching it on, flipping, stretch it down, flip, and then sort of go back in. Um, I will do this, I'll try to do this like on the Jumbotron sometime or up close for you guys because it's a really specific set of moves, but it's really fun once you get it. So you can make a piece where it's all hollow pieces attached solid if you don't want to do, if you're, not, if you're not comfortable with hollow seals yet, but you just have to be able to attach them with strategy so that you have a nice sort of tapered out point where the thin meets the thick in a, in a more gradual way. Water's gonna shoot up inside of it. And then we'll seal the water in permanently. So that's a fun little thing to add on there. I love stealing water in my little animals. Yeah. It creates a vacuum because the glass is hot and the water's cold. So it's sort of like kind of right now. I can see it kind of going whoop, 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 very slowly. And then it's gonna go up inside probably over the course of a few minutes. Oh, yeah. What's that? Uh, uh, that old thing? Okay. Cool. Um, yeah, we can do more animals if you want. We've really been demoing for like an hour. So, um, how are you guys feeling? You good? Do you want to see like a bird or something? Or sure. another, uh, another creature? Yeah? Okay, cool. Let's do it. Birds are great because you can make them with ugly bubbles. <laughs> it's a good way to turn your ugly bubbles into something.
guys like know Shane Farrow's work? Shane Farrow? Yeah. Check it out. He does a lot of birds with really beautiful color application. Um, and they're soft glass. And he'll apply layers and layers of frit and powder onto the body of the birds. They're, they're pretty sort of stylized, minim minimalist, but quite recognizable. Let's see how this goes. Sometimes it's hard to blow a weird off-center bubble. So I'm just not turning. Everything you don't want to do if you're trying to make it look nice for a, a regular bubble. You blow out a body. Cute. They're like a nice plump creature. Pull down this face. So if you're trying to make like a specific animal, a specific kind of bird, I really recommend having a picture reference because the smallest little detail, smallest sort of like silhouette change will really influence it. <laughs> Keep you on your toes. Okay, so let's do some little legs. So I cast the rod on and I puff it out. Build a little heat into this rod to pull it into a leg.
here. And it will stand. We can get extra. Give it little claws. The smallest flame my my torch can allow, really. Four millimeter rod, three millimeter. So these are very basic forms, kind of show you sort of the stepping stones of working hollow, and there's so much more to get into, but this is a starting point for those of you who are beginning. I just recommend pulling like 50 points, trying to blow 50 bubbles, because you're not going to be happy with them until probably you're on your like 20th maybe. I'm going to do 50 more, exactly, <laughs> exactly, it's James, yay, okay, so we'll let it cool down, and then we can melt it off, we got a little birdie, we can of course make wings, and all that, maybe I'll add wings on, or put a little person on there, or something later, one is full of water now, Once the water's in there, like, there's nothing more you can really do. <laughs> I do not anneal these. I flame anneal it before I go and fill it with water. And then you just like, it's just, that is what it is. It's all a physics demonstration. <laughs> the butt is hot, so don't... Like, make it do like a swan dive at first, so it can cool down. Okay, so you it and then you put it in the water so it's Yeah. It's so thin, it doesn't need much flame annealing really to start, but if it got really thick, yeah. you can always anneal it before you put it in the water. So we cut the opening off, off the little tiny vase, and just ream it open. You can use all sorts of little teeny tiny flaring tools. I've just got my reamer with me today. So I'm using a small, bushy, gentle flame. We can ream it open a little bit. We can make it a sweet little pitcher. Getting your knife, kind of going like that. so fancy even though it's honestly just a bubble in disguise <laughs> I do like this as a beginning exercise because you force yourself to blow 50 bubbles and then 50 more 
And then you can have a sweet little bottle collection if you want. It's really fun to make them into like floppy dishes. Floppy what? Like floppy dishes. Oh floppy. yeah, sure, like, yeah. instead of like, just like spin the hell out of it. Like punchy it up and then yeah. spin the hell out of it, yeah. That's a fun little thing you can make. Yeah, 